What's up everyone? I'm Chad Quidero, printer at David Crit Projects. Welcome back to my home studio for another DKW print demo video. Today is going to be a continuation from the previous two videos, which is multi-layer, multi-color hand printing relief prints. Last week, I briefly introduced the concept of how to modify your inks using the peanut butter and jelly principle, which means you want to layer thinner inks on top of thicker inks when you're printing relief prints so that you get consistent flat opaque colors. I'll show you guys how to do that today, as well as registration for your paper, for your different layers, and obviously hand printing. So please stay tuned. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll respond to you as soon as possible. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have my first layers printed. I have three. After multiple tests, I decided that I'd like to go from dark to light in color with my layers. So we're gonna move over here to the inking table. I have my three different inks laid out. This is layer number two, layer number three, layer number four. So I'm gonna show you guys how to modify ink. Um, I have set well compound over here. Um, and this is basically vegetable fat product that greases up the ink a little bit. These measurements are approximate, but you can kind of feel the difference when you mix in ink. So I'm gonna mix about a normal pinky nails worth of Setswell to the ink. Cobalt dryer here. And mix about the same. And I'm mix that into your ink. What the Setswell is doing, as I said, is making your ink a bit greasier. It's thinning it out a tiny bit the purpose of the cobalt dryer is in the name. It's to speed up the drying time of your litho inks. So, as you guys may or may not know, oil-based lithography inks take a really long time to dry if they're unmodified. So your ink will take, depending on the weather, two to four days to dry. So to assist in the process of drying, I modified the ink with a little bit of cobalt dryer. Now, because this is the next layer, I'm gonna add can't really see the label because it's old but this is litho varnish number three the number refers to the density of the varnish and because it's the next layer i want to add a tiny bit that should be about enough so what the litho varnish is going to do is it's going to thin your ink out quite a bit. As it says in the name, it's a varnish, which means it mixes perfectly with oil-based lithography or etching inks, but because it's little varnish, we use it for lithography. <laughs> so this part of the process is really, really important because you want to keep an eye on the density of your inks for each layer and kind of keep in mind the consistency you want to make sure that this ink is a lot thinner or a lot runnier than the previous layer. You want to make sure that this ink is a bit runnier or thinner than this layer. And this ink is a lot runnier and thinner than this layer. And that's just going to help for your ink to sit consistent and flat on top of other inks. Now that I showed you how to mix your first batch you want to keep your settle compound and your cobalt dryer fairly consistent throughout all of them because those are not really modifying the inks to thin them. So I'm going to keep the same amount of settle compound throughout and the same amount of cobalt dryer throughout. The variable that I'm going to shift with these inks is the litho varnish number three because that's what's thinning the ink out. That's the property that needs to be different between each of the inks for each of the layers. So without adding too much, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one than I did to the previous one. And even more to the last layer. Um, you can definitely put too much litho varnish in your ink and 
what will start happening if you add too much leather varnish is it will become so runny or so thin that the ink will just pretty much slide off the plates and slide on the paper and double print and that's not a good thing, we don't want that. You'd rather add too little than too much because you can always add more litho varnish but if your ink is too thin you'll have to go back and re-mix the whole pack. If you're modifying your ink with litho varnish you don't want to make it too thin but you want to make it thinner than the previous layer so that it prints consistently. Remember when you're mixing your ink you want to make sure it's mixed thoroughly. You don't want striations of drier or litho varnish or set soil in your ink. You want it to mix to thick ink consistency. So this one's more runny than the previous one, which is good. Still thick enough to print. And I know that just because of time and experience, right? So as you can see, this one could use a little bit more little varnish. I don't want to put too much. Cool. So now we're ready to ink up the plate and print. Okay. So this is the last layer of ink that I put on my plates. The plate is inked up and ready to print now. So last time I showed you guys how I made this four layer registration in relation to how I cut these prints. So this one has been printed with the first layer. What you can do if you need to take your page off, your piece of paper off, is create registration marks. So these blue lines will be cut off after I've printed and line the page up, I align each of these registration marks or registration ticks to one another. Because they're on each of the sides of the sheet, I can make sure that way that the paper is in exactly the same spot each time, even if I have to remove the paper from the registration. So once that's lined up, get my tape tabs, Without shifting the paper, Let's tab it in place, and your paper is registered for the next layer. So once this print is completed, I'll just crop off these registration marks. Okay, so now I'm going to place my plates according to the second run on my registration, which is in blue. So the first run was this layer, which was the plate was registered to the purple outline. As you can see, run one is in purple, run two is in blue. So I'm gonna register the outline of the plates with the outline of the blue marker on the registration acetate. So as you can see, the plate is now lined up according to the blue registration marks, which is run two. Carefully, I'm gonna lay my paper down from one end to the other to ensure that it doesn't move and a slight amount of pressure with my fingers will just ensure that the plate and the paper stick for now until we start printing the spoon. Okay, so once the paper is laid down flat this is the point where you could use some help. Um, if you don't have help you can do it yourself, it just makes things a little bit more difficult because you want to brace the paper with one hand and use the wooden spoon to print with the other. I start at one, at one point and work your way through. This is, it's super important in this step that neither the paper nor the plate moves because that would mean you'll be double printing your image which is not desirable.
you could hand prints on any kind of sturdy thinner printmaking paper you could use Fabriano as an example or Arsh the Arsh sheets become a little bit trickier because they're thicker and more textured so you want to print if you're using Arsh you want to print on the smooth side of the paper and because it's a bit thicker you'd want to apply a little bit more pressure to get the consistency So now that that side's done, I want to shift and apply pressure on this side. As you're rubbing the paper with the spoon, the areas in which the plate sits underneath become shinier. So you can see what you, you can kind of see what you printed onto the paper from the back. It's slight, but you can kind of see it. Those lines and marks that transfer. Okay, so I've kind of, I feel like I've covered the entire plate, so now I'm going to gently lift the sheet, making sure that it doesn't shift registration, just to peek and see if we got the consistency that we want, which we didn't really. So you can see areas, flatter areas are kind of blotchy. They're printed, but they're a little bit blotchy, which means I want to carefully place the paper down and go back into certain areas with pressure, kind of focus on certain areas that didn't transfer as well as others. So you can see after the second line, the other areas printed a little bit better. Just want to go around the plate and all the areas that are being solid or flat, you want to pay a little bit more attention to. The lines will always print a lot easier than flat sections of ink. Um, and this is normal, obviously, because with flat inked up areas, you need a consistent high pressure to get opaque, an opaque flat area on your prints, which means you will have to pay extra attention and extra pressure. Apply extra pressure to areas that are ink flat. <laughs> okay, so I think it's good. It's a little bit patchy. But I think we can move on to the next layer. Okay, so I've taken the plates away. Now, when you're removing tape tabs from the back of a print, you want to pull away from the paper and very slowly, because your tape could rip the top layer of your paper off. I'll show you what that looks like with this. So that'll happen, you'll tear your paper if you don't remove the tape correctly. It'd be terrible, especially when you're printing layered lino cuts to get to the end, the last layer, and then you rip a chunk of your paper off. So don't do that. <laughs> be very gentle when you're removing your tape. So this is a really nice area to be able to tell or differentiate between the two. So this dark area over here, these dark areas over here are first, and then this lighter area is the section that we just printed. So in these two faces, this one will be the one that we printed first, and this is the one that we printed right now. This is fairly obvious, but you can, you can use any colors that you want to. Um, I suggest testing your color mixes before, layering them beforehand. Sometimes certain colors sit better on top of others 
That all depends on the way the ink was made, the amount of pigment versus the amount of oil or medium that's in the ink. As I've said in all the demos, testing is key. So the more tests you do, the more informed you'll be about the exact materials that you are working with in the moment. And it'll make for easier printing. Once this is dry, we'll move on to the next layer and then do the fourth layer after that and look at our print. The second layer that we printed and recorded yesterday has just dried completely. And now it's pretty much a process of repeating the steps that we did. We're gonna register the paper again. Ready to ink up layer number three and print. So now that the plate's inked, we're going to register the lino cut to run number three on the registration. Run number three is in red, so we're lining up the outer edge of the plate to the red markings on the registration. We're ready to press once again. side to the other very gently making sure that nothing is going to shift or move so now we're ready to print again and again following the same process I like to brace the side of the sheet and start from the edge Applying quite a lot, but a medium amount of pressure at the beginning. So we can always go back in and make sure that certain areas printed. Um, I'm not applying a crazy amount of pressure right at the beginning because I don't want the plate to shift. And yeah. So that's layer one, two, and three. So the third layer of our lino cut has dried and we're pretty much gonna repeat the process that we did before in the last three layers to print the fourth and final layer. Now we're ready to ink and print. Okay, so I've inked up my plates in a lighter color than the last three and as we did before I'm going to line it up with run number four which is in black so register the lino plates according to the black registration marks this time and then once again grab the paper from one side to the other. Gently lay it down over the surface of the liner. That's our four layer prints. I'm gonna 
crop it down along with the other tests that we've done and take a look at all of them together. Okay, so I've cropped down our four layer hand printed lino cut along with the other proofs that I've done. This is the first print with one layer. This is a print with layers one and two. This is layers one, two, and three. And this is all four um, that we printed by hand. Um, as you can see, the paper for the four layer lino cut took quite a beating. And that's because it is a bit of a thinner paper. So this is a white um, Zirkel Litho, which is 250 grams, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas this is a 300 gram sheet of Osh, which is a softer white. So it's an off-white or cream colored paper. It's a lot thicker and more sturdy, um, which means, especially when you're hand printing, it'll hold up to continuous rubbing with the spoon a lot better. It is also heavily textured on one side. So if you're using this heavier ash paper, you want to print on the smoother side of the paper. Lino cuts are quite beautiful to layer because they work like stamps. So the different layers become transparent. You can see through, not necessarily the ink, but you can see through um, previous layers in where you've carved out. So things begin to double up and read through and you really are able to get quite a visceral sense of each of the different layers when they're printed together. Beautiful examples of how um, artists have employed techniques of layering lino cuts is Robin Penn's Ses Nespa Son Nug, which is butchered, but it's French for this is not a cloud. She, she worked in a similar way to the way I've worked here, and she printed a lino cut of a cloud right side up and then flip the plates and printed another layer on top with it upside down and creates a really beautiful abstracted two layer color liner cut. Another beautiful example of this is Avashoni Maengane's Spirit of Creation and that employs liner cut layering in a different way where he uses color and layering to get tones in different colors in the liner cut. If you see one of those works in real life, you can really see how the ink layers on top of uh, the previous layers and it creates a really beautiful, almost impasto feeling without looking weird. Um, this is, it's a really beautiful work to see. So keep in mind those two artists when you're researching this technique. There are a bunch of other people that do it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've learned how to layer multiple lino cuts with hand printing in color. And this is Chad Quidero signing out.